Hello, Brad here. Just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. Good evening, beer geeks. It's Friday. It's 5pm. Now, we know that this podcast is a bit of escapism for you. It's a bit of escapism for us. It's a chance to, you know, crack a beer and breathe out after a long week, but... It's been a really horrible week for a lot of people. It's been a really rough week. And I think we just need to address that before we get into the fun and the escapism, which I promise is coming in spades. Um, So Brad and I just wanted right at the top um, to make some things super clear. So this week I got into loads of hot water on social media for suggesting that breweries shouldn't be sending out exploding cans. We just want to make two things super clear. One, there is no excuse for dangerous cans being sent out to people no excuse whatsoever and we understand that accidents happen and you have to deal with it right not blame the consumer which is what happened this week we also need to point out we are not a pr machine which some people were trying to claim we were saying you shouldn't be attacking brewers we didn't attack them and they did a very very dangerous thing and we called it out because they weren't fixing it secondly we need to readdress all of the language around male violence and stop giving curfews to women and start giving curfews to men who are the perpetrators of all of this violence. Thirdly, we... (laughs) This is a longer rant than it was going to be. Thirdly, the UK media is racist. Yep. Absolutely racist. And the fact that the Society of Editors came out and said that is shocking. And we all need to re-examine ourselves at the Craft Beer Channel. We're re-examining ourselves and looking at our biases. And last year, we made a promise that we would be more representative. And then lockdown happened. So that is our focus for 2021 once we're able to travel. Um, and then my final point is abolish the fucking monarchy. Hi, Brad. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm right, mate. Um, not a massive <laughs> fan of the monarchy either, really. I mean, they're just, they're just well, potentially, depending on who you talk to on the internet, they might be lizard people that are uh, sort of <laughs> controlling the world or potentially they're just they're just a, another family of people that we kind of yeah just another flawed family that yeah but we, we shouldn't be in the position about no we just fund their lifestyle and they own like vast swathes of the land and and the sort of you know every everything really so it's it's a uh, we live in a we live in a strange country that um you know like this is why i always i look at america and i think i I do like America. I like the setup over there. Obviously, no, no, nowhere's perfect, and you know, all the gun stuff over there is obviously crazy from a European perspective. But um, you know, at least they're not c- cursed with a sort of medieval, almost like feudal system um, that's incredibly strange to to a modern society. But um, yeah, although they did have a lizard in power for about four four years. What do you think? Um, what do you think uh, Prince Philip would drink? As a, do you think he like beer, or do you think he just drinks uh, the blood of children? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, of course. I'm joking. Uh, I don't. I mean, yeah, you're joking, but it's clearly the blood, the blood of children. Obviously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's uh, let's get back into beer then, Bradley. Stick to beer, as the trolls would have us uh, have us do. Uh, what have you been up to this week? Anything beery? Um, yeah, I've been up to a little little bit of beery stuff. So, you know, as as a kind of um, lockdown uh, thing, I've I've challenge I've set myself. I kind of wanted to explore the world of beer and gadgets and and how technology can potentially make me, who's not such a beer expert as yourself, 
uh, can it give me an edge over you or to sort of catch up to you? And uh, this week I've been exploring how I could do that with home brewing, which has been quite interesting. So I've, I've you know, got this product, which is called a painter, um, which is kind of like a, I don't know if I could call it a home brewing system, but it's a, a kind of, um, you know, a, a, a really beautiful design bit of industrial design that's in lovely uh, mustard yellow plastic um, very very luxuriant kind of surfaces and it's a beautiful thing but essentially it's a kind of um, a, a, a beer extract that you're putting into water and you kind of shake it around and you leave it in a corner of a room for a period of time uh, to brew and then you put it in the fridge for a period of time to condition and then it's got this real sexy um, pub style handle um, to dispense the beer. So um, I haven't I haven't actually tried it quite yet, but I'm I'm planning on trying it today potentially, uh, depending on how my day goes. But um, it's very exciting. It's very very easy to use thus far. So I'm hoping that the beer is going to taste lovely. Yeah, it's sort of it's an interesting product because yeah, it's not really homebrew. It's kind of like trying to challenge all of those like plug and play like where you get mini kegs and sort of plug them into these machines yeah. but trying to make it tap fresh i guess yeah so the idea I, I guess is like you get a pub fresh beer that's dispensed from that that tap and you get that experience um and like i said i haven't actually tried it yet but it, it does look like it could could be good i mean it smelled great um at various points when i've, I've had to do small small uh, things to it so i'm, I'm hopeful Amazing. Amazing. So yeah, this is all going to be part of a new playlist that we're going to slowly introduce to the channel, which is, you know, very much from Brad's brain rather than mine. And it's, it's yeah, how technology can influence what we, what we drink at home. And I guess eventually maybe in the breweries as well. Um, so we've got a super cool name for it. We won't, we won't spoil the name yet. Um, and we're going to brand it up real nice. And uh, yeah, that's going to be Brad's thing. So I'm excited to try some pint of beer um i think we're going to do a blind taste test maybe that's it i'm going to try and fool you seeing if i can pull the <laughs> uh the wool over your eyes with some sweet sweet technology awesome i look forward to that um so yeah this week i have also mostly been doing beer stuff uh mostly editing this week's video very hurriedly because um as you may have seen on social media we had to delay the second episode of our 100,000 subscriber 100 ibu red ipa video because somebody drove over the sample bottle we sent to Siren with a tank. Yeah, um, amazing. It was like just completely flattened. I don't know what had happened to it. Um, but amazingly, I sent them two beers. I sent them also, they hadn't tried the Christmas beer. Um, and that one survived, miraculously. Wow, that's the spirit of Christmas right there, in effect. Yeah, I couldn't couldn't believe that mm. um so yeah there we go um so all the reviews came in super late as always so i was having cycled it all over london two weeks beforehand then had to edit everything the day beforehand but it you know it came together really really nicely and the recipe itself um you know we've tweaked that and put that online i'll put a link to the video and to the recipe down below so you guys can see it but basically it had a little bit of diacetyl and wasn't quite aromatic hop enough hoppy uh, hoppy aromatic enough blimey what what am i trying to say there didn't have enough hop aroma so we've tweaked it a little bit fixed the diacetyl we probably under pitched the yeast considering it got to over eight percent and we probably rushed it a bit because i was trying to get the beer out so it hadn't cleaned up its mess which you guys don't need to worry about hopefully <laughs> so um yeah it's a really good little recipe and we've just taken out the carafa so it's not a black ipa so it's gonna be a bit more red <laughs> that's that's it right yeah exactly a bit more red a bit less buttery and more of that kind of marmalade character that we were going for which was definitely there it was just i think diastil hit it a little bit the abv hit it a little bit and i think at home although we were trying to get to 100 ibu and we definitely did i've just tweaked it so it's more like 90 to 95 ibu but that gives you a little bit more aroma, a little bit more dry hop charge, and a little bit less boil hop. Should be um, um, should be one hundred and four IBU now, Johnny. We're at one hundred and four thousand subs. I know what what happens if we get to a million subs, Brad? Are we? Oh my god! <laughs> Going to do a million IBU? Our tongues will um, just. It'll be like the scene from uh, Indiana Jones and the Lost Ark, where our faces will just melt like the bad uh, Nazi people when they open the, the Ark <laughs> of the Covenant. 
We're just ah! or when the guy drinks from the wrong uh, drinks from the wrong grail as well. He does Chalice. the melty thing. Yes, clearly. Who, who directed that? Is is it Spielberg? Uh, Spielberg. Yeah, I think he directed. Yes, yeah, so he, he loved the melty man. Apparently, I think. I can't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he directed all three of them. I'm glad you said all three because the fourth one didn't fucking happen. No, well, apparently there's a fifth one potentially coming. Oh no! <laughs> no 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 no! Yeah, no. there you go. He he should retire from. Well, generally, maybe, but definitely from that role. Well, I mean, I yeah, probably. I'd like to see... Oh, no, they killed off his dad already, didn't they? Um, they killed off uh, Bond, who's actually died, unfortunately. But I would, I would have liked to have seen a sort of computer-generated um, Sean Connery, maybe. Like a really old Sean Connery <laughs> in, in something. But he's already dead. In in uh, in yeah, the lore of, yeah. of indie, so mm. sad times. Yeah, it was. It kind of the fourth one put a real downer on on stuff. Um, I don't know. Well, man. That, I mean, so I remember that coming out and everyone being like, "Oh God, there's aliens in it." Now it's ridiculous. But let's not forget that at some point they opened the Ark of the Covenant and light came out and murdered people. Like, it wasn't like the original three were completely grounded <laughs> in reality. No, I guess that was that was more kind of to do with religion and, uh, you know, of this earth, it, you know. But, I mean, certain... we, we know that aliens exist. They have to. Well, Whereas I, we don't yeah. know that God exists. Uh, yeah, of course. Of course. Well, it's hard to, to prove anything, isn't it? But, yeah, I mean, you know, modelling the universe, uh, I think there's something like there are... 32 reachable civilizations or something right now apparently when they calculate is that right that's what they reckon something like that but they you know there's all sorts of stuff going on that we don't we don't know about um what was i reading about the other day just about well they're in the monarchy right who knows mate who knows i don't i'm not sure they're (laughs) um i'm not sure they're aliens uh i I just oh you reckon they're just like straight up lizards i don't no i don't i don't believe in David Icke nonsense, but um, they're, they're definitely uh, maybe vampires in, in that they're, they're kind of blood sucking, <laughs> blood sucking the economy. Um, it's, it's the horror version of the Oasis album. Definitely, maybe uh, <laughs> vampires. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get into the comments on the video? I suppose why not? A eh? why not? Um, so it was so lovely to see so many people congratulating us again. That you know. Doing two videos means you get double the congrats, which was uh, <laughs> which was a, a move we didn't intend to take. But uh, nice pat on the back. It's been though. really nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, let, let's dive in. What did what did you find? Well, I've that got intrigued one you? in terms of we, you know, we were saying we think it was a success. It was a super tasty beer, and kind of all of the people that tried it um, kind of tended to agree with us. So we had a comment from someone with a great name called Mouth Weather, which I can presume is is sort of maybe like a tasting kind of thing imagine what, what's the weather in your mouth right now johnny um i was eating a bit of lemon <laughs> drizzle cake just just before we did this so the weather in my mouth it's was, a bit early for lemon drizzle I know, well you know it was it was a, a client's son had made it and sent it to me in the post so you know it's delicious and i've had it for about a week so i thought well it's Man, gonna that get is the dry. best kind of post definitely mate definitely yeah Super nice. So my mouth weather is kind of um, drizzly right now. In fact, I, I would <laughs> if I was thinking about it. If I was going to be a rapper, my my um, my name would be L Drizzle, like uh, or maybe Lethal Drizzle, um, in, in in honor of the cake of my cake of choice. But anyway, back to <laughs> mouth weather. His comment was fantastic feedback. Just drop the red and remarket it as J and B's hundred thousand strong ale, which I, I liked. I thought that was it a sound sounds like a legit beer from like the sixties, doesn't it? Definitely. But isn't J and B I feel like J and B's is a brand of like whiskey or something or Yeah. It yeah, is, it is a right? it is a whiskey brand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like a cheap maybe like a cheaper one. So I'm not quite sure what he was implying. But I guess we are J and B. Yeah, I think I drank a lot of it at uni. Did you? Nice. It was like the next step up from you know, like the the really dodgy blended whiskies that were probably all made by the same people and they just gave it different names. Jacobite. Oh, God. Jacobite is what we used to buy. Jacobite whiskey. And you'd mix it with um, just the strongest soda you could find, like Coke or Strong, Fanta Tropical. Strong soda? 
I don't think strong. Like, oh, you strong mean like flavored. flavor? Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, to hide it because it was nasty stuff. Did I ever tell you about the time, Johnny, that I drank um, a, a Glen's vodka that I'd bought from a little corner shop in New Cross one New Year's Eve, and I woke up in the morning, and uh, my vision was was fucked, and well, I was also pissing blood, um, and then I watched on Watchdog because this was how long ago it was that there were lots of fake Glen's vodkas um, about, and it was on the news, and loads of people had died from drinking fake Glen's vodka over the holiday period. Um, oh, my God. So I nearly killed myself drinking this this fake uh, Glen's vodka. But hey, hey. Okay, I guess your diet of burgers and more burgers um, gave you the iron constitution required to survive it. I still pissed blood, which was terrifying, like <laughs> proper blood. Um, it's, the, it's a horrible phrase, mate. It was. It I mean, was it's horrible. probably more horrible to experience that phrase. Oh my but God. Still. And I was, you know, I was in my twenties, so I was like, you know, thought I was totally impervious to anything. Pissing blood on a, you know, the the dawn of a new era. That's not the one. You don't want to start. A, you don't want to start the first of January pissing blood, mate. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> this is this is this is going to be a bad year. Yeah. <laughs> or it can only get better from here. One of one of the two thoughts. Well, that's that's it, right? You've got to always be positive. Um, we we had another comment which I love from Jagman Seven, who just said, "Amazing, what a night in a pub drinking beer can lead to." Congrats on a hundred thousand. Keep up the great we- uh, great beer work. Cheers. Um, I I totally agree with that sentiment. Like so many great ideas happen in the pub, and I think that one of these unmentioned costs of of lockdown is going to be how many ideas didn't happen in 2020 and 2021 because we weren't, you know, relaxed, sociable, chatting nonsense. Mm. And that's exactly how the channel kind of kind of started, really. Yeah, I think um, it's you so know, yeah, there's a cultural loss. There is a cultural loss, and it's that that kind of. Um... Relaxed nature and a relaxed way of being opens up your mind to um, different kinds of uh, of experiences and different ways of thinking about stuff. So you know you're right. Without that that kind of um, outlet, I think a lot of yeah, you're right. A lot of a lot of things that probably been would have been positive new ideas in the world that would have been formed. Around a around a, a restaurant dinner table or you know a, a bar or a pub, they're not going to happen. They've all been put on hold. So um, yeah, and I, I, don't, I don't think that ideas are quite as you know Zoom is a bit of a filter. Mm. I think for ideas like you're all talking over each other or you don't want to dominate the conversation or whatever it is. And um, actually, I wrote an article about this for Good Beer Hunting um, called um, "Final Gravity: Counting the Cost of COVID," and it was all about you know, the cultural loss that might come as a, as, as a result of the pandemic. So I'll put a link to that as well, because we discuss, you know, what's lost by collaborations not happening f- physically or, you know, the craft beer conference in America and beer X, you know, being being cancelled or, or put online and all this kind of stuff. It's it's going to be an intangible, th- a really hard thing to measure, but it is actually tangible in the future stuff that we'll, we'll have lost. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, um, back to the positives. Um, we got a, a, a really lovely comment from Father Earth ninety three who said you can use all the calculators and brewers tools you want, but in the end, nature still takes its course when you're home brewing, and that's what I like about it. Um, which is true. I mean, this is what we get asked a lot. You know, is brewing an art or a science? And you know, the answer is basically it's a science um, up until about ninety five percent, and then there's five percent of art which is designing the recipe, getting the complementary flavors, and they're dealing with yeast. The yeast is a living organism that does all kinds of unusual things that you don't expect. You know, WLP001, the yeast we used in this homebrew, is not one associated with much diastole production, but something about our ferment made it throw it out. Hmm. Um, and, you know, it was my mistake. I probably should have given it another two, one or two days at, at ferment temperature or warmer, um to clean that up but it was just not something i i expected so you know there is definitely still an art to brewing um that you know science quite can't quite account for defo um and that's before you get to you know like 
you know great flavors is you know it's like cooking it's these combinations that we have to think through really carefully and that's my favorite part of the home brewing process it's it's coming up with those recipes and trying to um coax out new things from the same ingredients that everybody's everybody's using um so in theory in theory that should be our last homebrew video with the current setup so we've got some really exciting news we still can't quite announce because there's been delays due to well the world but we should our next homebrew video should be in about two months time and should be super super exciting Uh, i can't wait to tell all you guys about exactly what is going to be happening to our homebrew content um Cool. That is the end of the show for this one. Um, I think all we need to do is say thanks to everybody that appeared in the video at the end. So massive shout out to uh, Jamie Oliver. Um, So, I mean, he's the busiest man on earth. So the fact that he took, you know, 30 seconds out to to just say cheers means the world to us. Um, Need to say thanks to Josh Meller, our lucky Patreon, who got a a Dayak riddled black IPA (laughs) through his door. Um, Malt Miller, of course, who supply all our homebrew ingredients and some of the equipment, um, along with Grainfather. So huge thanks to them. Um, and then to all of our pro Patreons. Um, so Siren, who obviously helped with the video. Um, uh, YCH Hops. Um, we sent some to Glen Africa, who unfortunately had too much going on. They couldn't record the video, but they enjoyed the beer. Um, so yeah, huge thanks to everybody that's been supporting us and, and got us to this point. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's that's it. It's been a team effort, hasn't it? For sure. You know, we can we can put all this stuff out without the the power. Well, the the love and the, and the the sort of sharing of information that we get from all of all of our um, community and our pro patreons, um, and 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 the wider beer community. Um, yeah, absolutely. And if you want to be part of that, you can join. There is a link in the description box and you get uh, rewards, merchandise and access to our Discord forum where we've now got about 250 beer geeks all chatting away every day and being super supportive to each other and helping us all grow in this beery journey that we've embarked upon. Real Final announcement, Johnny. We've got one more thing we're going to push, which is our, um, our cask beer festival that we're doing with Five Points in collaboration with Five Points Brewery which is in, I think, two weeks' time. It's two weeks on Saturday, yeah, 27th of March. Uh, We're going to be lucky enough to head to the Pembury, one of my favourite pubs, and we'll be broadcasting live from there a cask ale festival, the cask broadcast, for any Doves fans out there. (laughs) Um, It's, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Uh, They're sending out boxes with uh, their cask ale in mini cask uh, and also an amazing little uh, half-pint dimple mug um which so we'll put a link to that box down there and you can join us from 6 p.m that night uh we've got pizza and beer matching we've got panels with martin cornell the beer historian panels with some um, amazing cask brewers from around the uk about the future of cask and and how we can look after it better and how we can champion it um and a video of the brew day of best uh with five points going live as well so lots of exciting stuff to watch out for and it should be a really great drink along so yeah all the links are down below um so yeah we will see you on wednesday for another video it's a what even is episode so and it's a historical one as well so i'm looking forward to uh, more beer historians jumping on and uh, either attacking us or, or attacking the commenters which has started to happen so apologies for that but just i don't know smile and smile and wave smile and wave at the beer historians um yeah and we'll see you on wednesday see ya the bubble podcast is brought to you by the nerds behind youtube's craft beer channel head to youtube.com slash the craft beer channel to watch this week's video and over 400 more exciting episodes if you love what we do please 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 do subscribe and even join our patreon at patreon.com slash craft beer channel love and beer